Minute roll. Only only had to hit the button like three times, and then it says, "Hey, okay, I'll record for you." So we're recording. So, uh, uh, good morrow, ye uh, interactive dash storyteller. Hold on, I gotta roll my die. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> good morrow, me lard. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Wait a minute! I got I got to mix my my elements together to make my proper spell potion. Uh, are these spell potions? I don't even know. It's been so long since I've done D and D. There, yes, every rule for any aspect of fantasy practically is is embodied within D and D. One of my favorites is uh, Spelljammer, <clears throat> where you can uh, you could fly a giant manta ray in outer space because magic let let you do it. Yep. Wow. Was Spelljammer that kind of like futuristic steampunky? Steampunk powered punk? by magic. And um, it had like a bunch of rules for interplanetary travel in D&D fantasy world. <laughs> I never played it. I remember seeing the all the different uh, extensions and whatever they call them, compendiums and whatnot, at my local comic shop. But uh, never, never actually played that one. It's just out of arm's reach oh. over here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I the only ones I played. Uh, see, I, my my flirtation with role playing was only about four years long. Uh, it started out with D and D, then I went quickly to Palladium Heroes Unlimited. That became my favorite one, and then GURPS for a short time. Played around with GURPS because that was the best one because it was uh, all you needed was a six sided die. You don't need the twenty sided, the eight sided, the, the yep. whatever. Side. Steve Jackson games, right? Uh, GURPS. Yeah, sounds right. GURPS. Generic universal role playing system, I think, is what it was. I love Steve for. Jackson games. So many awesome, funny ideas come out of that that man's head and the people he hires. <laughs> and I've been told repeatedly by many people that po the Palladium system sucked. Um, I didn't know. I, never it. <laughs> I just liked played playing it. superhero universes. Nope. So. Anyway, but, but when you get into this world, there's always that guy like, "What you do." You do know that that one sucks. Yeah, exactly. That was inferior because statistically, you know, you would never, you know, whatever. It's such a bias, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so what? Well, and and I was I was fortunate enough to play with a lot of guys who had really uh, kind of expansive definitions of what is within the rule set. Like we, it was okay to invent rules. So like like coming up with a way to surprise the people playing the game. Um, I remember I said, like, would it be okay if I just had you guys occasionally roll an observation check and I'm going to write, I'm going to like come up with like a, a, a what is it? Like a, a one to 10 range of probability that you're going to notice this thing, whether it's like something small and shiny on the ground or whether it's a giant Godzilla creature looming over the building behind you. And you have to, I'm going to write on a piece of paper and you have to roll an observation check to make, to see if you even notice sure. it. And and they were like, yeah, sure, that, that sounds logical. You know, it wasn't in the rule book, but we came up with it so that I could come up with ways to where I'd say, hey, guys, roll an observation check. Boom. Okay, a train's about to hit you. <laughs> so, you know, now you got to roll for initiative to see if you can be able to dodge the train. Yep. So <clears throat> Nice. But, but yeah, but then I, then I also played Dungeons & Dragons with people who said, you cannot have an omniphobic warrior. Why not? Because he's a warrior. Warriors are not afraid of things. My warrior is. Nope, can't do that. You were banned from our game, and I got banned. Uh, it's, yeah, it's cool. Those, those different rule sets, um, play to different personalities. Like I know when I was younger, like I started playing, uh, totally inaccurately at a, probably about age 10 and I had a, a kid down the street from me who, he, um, his brother was older than both of us, but he was younger. Right. And so he's age eight teaching me and, um, you know, things like, yeah, clerics climb walls, um, you know, crazy stuff, right. That, that. I, I guess he was just making up and having fun, but I was taking it very seriously, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is fun. I like this game, and, you know, whatever. From there, you played it a lot and, you know, invented a few role-playing games and whatnot in elementary school to, I don't know, because it's fun, because you, it's, you get to play with, uh, you know, rules and, uh, uh, you know, surprising results with the rules, tell stories with them, and, you know, um, you could be obsessed by the... Uh, uh, the 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 definitiveness of it all, like wow, there's always a rule for everything, or the total who knows what's going to happen, randomality things, the treasure gathering, yeah. or the goal accomplishing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. So, and there's a lot of different ways to interpret it. And you know what, everybody who's listening or watching, uh, we did not know we were going to be talking about role playing when we hit the record nope. button. <laughs> 
But what it reminds me of is what we were talking about just before we started recording about this idea of anti-gurus, which I think is really, really cool. You coined that term, and I want it documented that you came up with that on uh, January 2nd, 2020. I did it because I was looking at an anti-guru. <laughs> just made sense. You are reading an article uh, on the NPRs? Um, no, I, I did it because someone told me to, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm, I'm, such, I'm so into being an anti-guru. I'm dodgy. You can't nail. You can't pin me down, man. <laughs> oh wow! Now you're getting very Dallas. He's there, but he's not there. True words are paradoxical. Oh no. no. <laughs> to to know the Rob is not the I'm real Rob after today. all. <laughs> oh, but people should be following you on the social medias because you've been posting a lot of interesting links. Um, the Maker Makes on design, community, and personal empowerment. Hey, that's that word that you were saying before we started recording that's getting passed around a lot. Or no, it was personal evolution, I think, is the one you were saying. Yes, which relates to our big topic today. But um, yeah, you're cruising yeah. around those links. Anything you wanted to comment on? Um, no, just you're sharing some interesting stuff. And I, and the, the I... The last couple articles that you've been put, uh, passing around, I think, are really good reading. The Maker Makes on Design, Community, and Personal Empowerment. It's a short, little bite-sized article, and it basically talks about you know a lot of the stuff that is kind of baked into our core philosophies already. He's just putting words to it, um, and it talks about how like the beauty of the community building, this kind, the, com the kind of community building he's talking about, where you're just sharing what you know and sharing your experiences. It doesn't feel like work. It feels like goofing off with your friends because that's mostly what it is. But at the same time, it helps people, you know. And uh, it's this whole idea. He talks about um, the the characterizes the the maker. What he calls a maker. What I would call a publisher or a content producer in the modern age is being somebody who is uh, nice and helpful. You know, is pleasant and helpful. Uh, those are the two qualities that define, like that, that are like kind of like really necessary in order to get traction with your stuff nowadays. Oh, well, conversely, if you have more of an edginess to you, I would say you have to be funny. Oh, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's a good. You know, good positive outlet for uh, for for grumpiness is uh, comedic grumpiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or just it works as a just say I was just kidding <laughs> when I said that your sweater looks terrible uh, when I said that you look a little fat I was just kidding uh, but but anyway yeah so you've just been posting some neat oh, stuff thanks. that I wanted to make a note of so people should be following you on the Twitters Rob Stenzinger on the Twitters Rob Stenzinger on Google Plus and um, Posterous and Tumblr and all those places uh, just look for that n nutty German last name yeah what's with What's with the clock behind you? Uh, it's it's meant to uh, make me not complacent about uh, the impermanence of things. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I I, I, uh, I like that we had, just adding some more visuals to um, to our topic today, which uh, we we um, we've got like a whole bunch of uh, you know fun things outlined that we want to talk about um you know things mm -hmm. in this google doc we use to manage topics for the podcast things in emails whatever um uh and it seems like uh, some of that's just going to have to build up because we realize we've got a lot to talk about today about um time management again uh yeah so here we go burgess meredith part two part two uh yeah yeah you know i it, it's funny that when we had something else that we were going to talk about today, but then in our regular Lean Into Art meeting, talking about stuff that we need to do, uh, it kind of leaked out that I was having a rough morning because of time management. Um, and you just very astutely observed that, hey, maybe there's some meat in there that we should just get out. It's, it's a good idea to get out of your system while it's hot in your mind, A. And, and B, it's like my first reaction was, no, we already did time management. Then I thought, you know what? That's a topic that can be revisited. We can do part twos and part threes of things, and it won't hurt anything. Um, because we got some new stuff to talk about. Because I think last time we talked about this, I mentioned the David Say Emergent Task Planner. Yes. Uh, but I wasn't 100% clear on how it worked. I had a vague idea how it worked. But like all, um, like all sinners, I only go to church when I'm in crisis. <laughs> because... Uh, 
And and kept telling me, you know, it's like you got to use this thing. It's going to change your life. You got to use this emergent task planner. And I said, nah, 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 I don't need it. I got it under my thumb. I know what I'm doing. I'll just use Nosby. I'll use Evernote. I'll use these digital tools, and I'll use my mind. My mind can hold most of this stuff. Uh, and then a couple weeks ago, I had a morning where I put in like nine hours uh, in in my studio, and I just didn't feel like I had anything to show for it afterwards. And it was like right after, uh, it was right after the holidays. It was. Um, you know, kind of hot on the tails of all of the the post production work we did on thirty thirty, oh, sure. uh, thirty classes in thirty days. If anybody hasn't heard of it, um, where we did a class every day for the month of November, and then had like a ton of work to do in like repackaging and, and processing all this stuff to make it available for people to download. Oh, sure. after yeah, the it's like um, preparing all sorts of fresh food, then to then walk away and let it rot. <laughs> we needed to yeah, no, we make those sandwiches. That. So, so the, you know, we, we, we just came off of a really busy time uh, from a really busy year, too. And, uh, and, and so it was like I was, you know, rubbing my hands together. All right, I can't wait to get back into all these other creative projects that I've been sort of letting sit on the side while I was doing more of this other stuff. Um, and then I sat down for a full day's work, and I just felt like I had nothing to show for it. Why? Because I was just bouncing around 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. And I made incremental uh, you know, uh, headway into these things, but nothing that felt like I had something to show for that time. And I remember just feeling just destroyed. It was devastating to have a day like that. Uh, so I came crawling to the emergent task planner and said, all right, what do you got? What, what can you do to make this, this manageable for me? And I, I've been using it for about a week and some change. And I got some observations to make about that. But before I go into mine, I want to hear what you've what you've been uh, what's changed since the last time we've for you since the last time we talked about uh, time management. Um, let's see what has changed. Um, I think in the the recent few years, um, I've been sort of on on a similar uh, a similar flow of time management where I go into um, a mode where I'll be you know hyper tactical and I will plan out many aspects of many days, and then I'll just let it go because I think whatever is important I'll be operating on automatically now uh, because I, I um, right around the in the early 2000s I experimented with you know I, I was building an app to help me with all this stuff and um, let's see that doesn't have to do with the lately stuff we can we can come back to that um, but you know lately it, I, I do this you know um, we actually make it part of our holiday at, at, at our house right so we we uh, we <clears throat> We celebrate solstice, and then we uh, we bust out these giant post-it note um, sticky things, right? They're they're you know the poster size post-it notes, and um, yeah. Then we uh, you know we we make sections, and you know for myself, my wife, and now our daughter, and uh, uh, we think about what's important, what do we want to do for this year, and it's both individually and together, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, for me, things like, well, leaning to art related stuff comes in there, but it's the, it's the big stuff. It's the big, um, you know, if I went into like my task list, it would just, you know, fill the thing up. Um, yeah. I remember a few years back before I went independent in consulting, um, you know, I just kind of needed to do that and I ended up filling this thing. It looked, uh, it looked like the, um. Uh, like in a movie scene, like a madman's prison cell, all the scrawlings, and yeah. <laughs> or you know, so there was Kate's part of the part of the chart, which was, you know, so so neat. She has way better handwriting than me. Um, clearly, she had a a more clear set of goals or whatever, and mine was just, you know, I'm you know, time of big turmoil and change and brah, figuring stuff. Is 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 Kate's is Kate's handwriting more angular than yours too? More angular, uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, well, a little bit um, um, with with some friendly loops in there too. More, more happy okay. loops also. Just curious, you know, I noticed that people with like really clear handwriting has uh, t tends to have like, and I don't want to go into handwriting, obs you know, analysis, what? but it'll have like uh, very, very straight and angular, like not like necessarily obtuse or acute or anything like that, maybe even just perfectly perpendicular, but like my, like I'll look at my handwriting, which is readable, but 
considerably sloppier than a lot of the people that I associate with. And I'll look at theirs and it's like, it's so crisp and every line looks like it was thrown down like Gordon Ramsay did it, you know? <clears throat> there, there's your A. And my A's are like, well, ah, you know? So anyway, Fun. sorry. sorry no, Frank. um... So you're scrolling on the wall. Yeah, like exactly. Man. And so, uh, you know, now I guess I'm a, I'm a lot more, uh, you know, I don't know, just more, more organized or more focused Mad Men than I was back then. And so, yeah, so I had, I put on, put out my list and that, that's a, uh, that's a normal thing for the end of the year that, uh, that I like to do. And, um, but at the same time, so you just it, did it's it. not like it's only this time of year. It's a, um, it's a part of that holiday for us, but like, it's also a part of, you know, our, our month to month as, as well. Um, you know, mm. Constantly going back and reassessing what you've done and where you're going. Yeah, um, I mean, it's not like uh, it's just, it's not as regular. It's like we will all of a sudden do it when when we have the need collectively. I mean, individually we do it too, but like being on the same page as a as a you know operating group of people. So, you know, for instance, when we have all these wild goals of you know that we want to accomplish, and we know we need to, you know, someone's there's always things to take care of in the house that we have this collective shared thing to deal with too. So it's not just about heading off into my office and coming up with, uh, you know, lots of lean into art details or other projects I'm working on. Um, if I want, if I care about actually getting that list done, I better think about the other list too and make them work together. So, yeah. That's, um, yeah. Like, like, uh, find a way to also fit. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go here just for a second. Well, before I say that, um, uh, fine. I'm gonna go to fitting it all in. Mm -hmm. I've got I got a thought on that that we talked about pre-show. Um, when you have these reassessment meetings with Kate, uh, are you guys doing a lot of writing when you do this, or is it just a lot of discussion? Uh, both, like note taking kind of writing. I mean, not like prose. Um, I mean, if something flows out, sure. But um, we'll typically have like. Uh, you know, notepads and laptops and then the big post-its and whatever. Yeah. So. Because I'm just, I, cause you could have a conversation and say like, oh, this isn't working so good. I need to do more of this or do more of that. I find that if, I, if that doesn't get captured at the time of expression, it's not going to be remembered. Uh, and I have a pretty good memory. But, you know, that's what the chalkboards are for in my house. That's what the notepads are for. You know, now there's, now there's literally a notepad in, in, on every table in every room. We, we went to um, the back-to-school sales this past fall, and they had those composition planners. You know, the one, oh, I got one right here. These guys. Oh, yeah, you know yeah. I'm talking about. Yep. They were 25 cents a piece. We bought a boatload oh, of them yeah, and figured we'll just populate the whole house <laughs> with them. Is that? That's a good deal. Are you looking for yours? <laughs> it was a bargain at Target. Uh, but anyway, but so, you know, there's, there's capture devices everywhere now because of that. And now I'm even keeping one of these composition books in my car just because of that thing that I talked about last, uh, the last time we talked about time management where, or no, that was during the 3030 uh, keynote yeah. when I was talking about keeping kits everywhere I go. Uh, capturing kits. Yeah, speaking of capturing, but, I'm, um, I'm hunting for a pen because... I'm like, huh, huh. part of my part of my functional memory is not operating at the moment. Uh, so, <laughs> but this idea of like going back and reassessing and uh, getting a sense of where your time is going or whether what's working, what's not working, this is something that's really interesting to me because this is what I'm discovering through using this emergent task planner now. Uh, you know, I said before in past podcasts that, well, I've got a system that works for me. I've got my Nosby. I've got my, uh, you know, Google Calendar, and I've got my Evernote. And I've got, I've always had my phone on me, so my phone is there to go ding whenever I got a thing that's coming up or a thing that's due or a thing that's important. But another thing that we talked about in the past is that it's really important to visualize your time, at least for me, I, I benefit immensely from being able to create a visualization of where the time is going or what I'm up against in terms mm -hmm. of a deadline. Uh, and I told stories before about when I worked for uh, a newspaper and there were all these hooks along a wall and each hook was an in hook for a different circular that we were doing ads for. And so there was the in hook and the out hook. And the, the goal of the week was by Friday have all of the, the in hooks empty and all the out hooks full. A uh, nice way to visualize what you're up against. So you knew that if Wednesday you weren't halfway through that row of hooks or whatever those things are called, like the 
more like the things in grocery stores, like the pegboard kind of stick that comes out that you hang an action figure on, that kind of dealy. Uh, if you weren't halfway through that, then you knew you were in trouble. You know, you have a great visualization of what you're up against in terms of workload versus time. Um, and usually I'm pretty good about that. But one of the things that that was a big light bulb moment for me after having that day of like where I worked nine hours and felt like I had nothing to show for it is there was nothing documented. I mean, if, if you asked me to say, what did you do today? I'd be like, ah, I worked a little bit on this and a little bit on that. Well, what exactly did you do? Well, I have to dig through my files and look for the most recently modified files to find like the whatever, you know, image files I was working on, text files I was working on and mm. so on. But, um, this emergent task. Do we want to just go into the emergent yeah. task planner then? Yeah, visualize I mean, this like... thing. I feel like doodling or seeing a website uh, or something here. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah. Let me let me pull it up. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I can pull up the instructions for this thing. Um, and now I got them on the screen for those who are listening to the audio after the fact. Um, in the video, I've got the instructions off of David Say's website, davidsay.com. And the whole idea is like you, you organize the day as it happens, as it says in the instructions. But what I'm really finding that I'm benefiting from is if you look in that left-hand column on the on the the sheet, there's oh there you go. Are you doing? Yeah, that? I I turned on drawing. So <clears throat> oh, oh, good idea. Okay, yeah, we got drawing, so might as well go. And I will change my ink color to green. If you look here along this column. Uh, there's little boxes check or open to mark w what hour your day starts. So, like, let's say my day starts at 10 a.m. I'd write 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, and so on, mm -hmm. right? And then next to each of those hour slots are there's a big block representing the entire hour, and then there's four little blocks representing 15 minute increments of time. Now, this is going to sound like, oh, this is way granular for uh, you know. Uh, watching your your workday, and I don't go, refer to it every fifteen minutes. Obviously, that would be neurotic if I did that. Oh, what, what's quarter after? Time to mark what I did. But what I am doing is I'm marking when I start my day by saying, okay, let's say today at the one o'clock mark, I had it marked meeting with Rob, mm -hmm. right? And then I estimate when that's going to end, whenever I think it's going to end, right? And then. As we're going along, if I'm if I'm getting past that time of when I uh, that estimation of time when I thought it was going to end, I mark what happened that made that last longer. So, for instance, uh, I was thumbnailing the other day, and again, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this so you can see it a little bit better. Ah, cool. Yeah, that's better. Oh, way better. Okay, so let's say I'm I'm doing thumbnails, and I started thumbnails at five o'clock. Let me get a smaller pen even. And there you go. If I draw slowly, it lets me write letters. And so let's say like I had it, so I would have put that, I'm getting ahead of myself because like you start with your three tasks that you want to do that day. So I'd put like thumbnails in slot one. And then I would put uh, lean into art meeting in slot two, and maybe, well, let's just go off my list here. Uh, oh, Jared comic. I want to do a Jared comic today in slot three. And next to those fields, you see that there's all these little mini blocks, and all those represent 15 minutes. And so you estimate how much time this is going to take. Like, oh, okay, well, I've got an eight-hour workday today, so I'm going to give myself one, two, three hours to work on thumbnails. Lean the heart meeting, uh, well, that usually takes about an hour and a half to two hours. I'm going to go on the outside and say two and a half hours for that. Jared comic takes me about half hour to do. I'm going to give myself a full hour to do it. Um, okay, so now I've got an estimation of my time. And then as the day's happening on the, on the left in this column, I mark that time and I make note of whatever happened that took longer. So let's say thumbs, thumbnailing, I got three hours slated, started at five o'clock. And let's say... By the time I get to, you know, 7 o'clock, all of a sudden I notice I'm not even halfway done with what I thought I was going to do. Well, now it's the time to go, while this is hot on my mind, while I'm in the moment, I'm going to make a note right here over what happened, right? So, like, yesterday, I've got some right here that I did. Um, okay, yeah, not yesterday. This was two days ago. This was 
December 30th, 2011. Uh, I started working on my front thumbnails at 3.45. By 6 o'clock, I don't know if it, you'll even be able to see this on the screen. Yeah. Uh, six, I, don't, I don't know what I'm also... I want to make sure I'm not showing anything that I shouldn't be showing yeah, to people. Cool. You flashed <laughs> it out there. <clears throat> it works. <laughs> if I can pause yeah. the video. Um, but... Uh, so, yeah, like 6 o'clock, I had to throw away six pages of thumbnails. You know, it says trash six pages only on page four after all that work. Now, why did I capture that? Because had I not, a day later, if somebody were to ask me, hey, I thought you were thumbnailing some front stuff yesterday. Yes, I was. How would it go? Oh, I just remember feeling really frustrated. Uh, I don't have anything to show for my time. I thumbnailed, you know, almost 10 pages and then said, this is garbage. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm setting it aside and I'm going to start over. But I made a note that I did that at, and at what time it happened. So I can, I can better estimate how long these things are going to take in the future. And I have a record of what I did so I can go back and look and say, look, dude, you, you thumbnailed for four and a half hours. You're good. Don't worry about it. What are you doing on the screen, Rob? <laughs> Causing trouble. <laughs> hmm. Oh, no, no, no. I, I was just asking what that I didn't know if you had a point you were going to make. I was, uh, nope. Just made a mark. Just drawing. On accident. Just drawing. And then you can also put in the, in the notes section how you felt about the day. Like this, a little angry guy. No, but so anyway, this, this whole, the big benefit that I got from this thing, and I don't want, I don't want to sound like a, one of those guys who like figures out the solution to a problem and suddenly everybody has to do it. You know, it's like the alcoholic who suddenly discovers church and now he becomes evangelical, right. you know? Nothing wrong with church. Nothing wrong with a guy finding solace in church. But we all met that guy who figured out a solution to a thing and then goes around proselytizing mm -hmm. it, right? But am I going? No. Uh, other than I do think we do that. that. But I mean, I I don't think <laughs> we can get out of that, in in my opinion, because you know we're we're big <laughs> on uh, um you know having uh well I mean look at the about page for Lean Into Art. I mean we want to they're just you have your beliefs and you know what's working for you and you're just going to share that with the world the thing is is like well it's up to everyone else what they want to do with it so you know, yeah that's true sharing. that's true i shouldn't apologize for so that. yeah go to church or whatever <clears throat> um or go to so okay so I'm, I'm keeping track of my day in in this left column and then meanwhile he has this section and i think this is great what else is going on today while the day is going on, you're getting phone calls, you're getting emails, you're getting things that you got to follow up on. But the mistake I've often made in the past, at least in the recent past, I didn't, I didn't have this problem so much years ago, but it's getting worse. Um, ding, inbox. Oh, it's Dan Michigan. He's got to think about Kids Read Comics. Oh, could you take care of this real quick? Thanks. Uh, oh, man, I got to put aside all this stuff. I was in this rhythm when I was writing. Now I got to fire off this quick thing about Kids Read Comics. I got to send him a new banner for the email footer or whatever. And that's going to take maybe 20 minutes of my time. I can market in here, but I've been taken out of the flow when I was yeah. in that zone of writing my thumbnails, right? In this time that I thought I had slated. Um, instead, yeah, th yes, th th this, this column on the left is flow. Instead of interrupting that flow, I take five seconds. I jot down, do the KRC thing for Dan. You know, blah, blah, blah. I write it in the sidebar there saying anything else that comes in during the day that I don't have time to attend to right away, put it in this area so I can transfer it to tomorrow's to-do list. Yeah. Like the what else is going on today is the inbox. Okay. <clears throat> and it's also an inbox for anything else that occurs to me, you know, as, as I'm getting, as I'm planning the day. So, like, I'm looking at today's work list. And after the, the, the uh, Leonard's Art cast with you today, I'm going to work on two different comics projects. But I've got three more comics projects that I want to work on. Okay, those are going to go in the slots four, five, and six. Like, this is an area specifically for stuff that you may not have time for, but should the opportunity arise. And then in this version, I, I work with um, the mini planner. The mini planner is... Um, it's like half of a letter sheet of paper. Okay. Uh, so it takes up less desk real estate, but it means that it's missing the seven, eight, and nine slots that David okay. Say's got on here. For the more, like, so you can have nine major tasks. Uh, but this is sitting next to me all day while I'm working, and I'm just checking in on it every once in a while just to say, like, oh, what time is it now? Oh, it's three o'clock. Okay, this is what I've gotten done up until three o'clock. And if any 
random thoughts occurred to me. Like, for instance, uh, hey, you know what? I wonder if Sugary Cereals would benefit from having a static home page and having the archives be behind buttons on the main page. I don't know. Think about it. Jot that down. This is a place to capture it because that is an actionable item. Explore this thing. This isn't something where it's like in a in a notebook where I carry where I'm going to keep keep story ideas. This is something where what are task related ideas that occurred to me throughout the day. This is the place. The yeah, task like planner is a place to, to utility that. that has a little bit of a documentation aspect to, of it, but it's not really. <clears throat> it's not meant to be just a. Um, creative composition right and then it's a finished resource it's really a living thing for a for a day right and it's it's like a yep. utility that will uh it's like you you record your intent for the day and then you record what actually happened too and then capture the extra yep. stuff so yeah that's exactly what it is and and before anybody says like, oh man, you're trying to put me in a box and bum me out with all this uh, organizational stuff. Well, this is kind of what we have to do, you know, when we're doing creative work from home. We have to treat it like a job and we have to be our own bosses. And that's how this was coming. This is how this was feeling to me. This is like when I used to work a day job and I would show up for my graphic design work. It's like, here's the stack of stuff that needs to be done today. You've got eight hours. Fit it in. Um, and this is where I want to get on my topic about fitting it, fitting it in real quick. This sure. is more of a philosophical thing, stepping back. After I had that crisis of, oh, my God, I didn't get anything done today, I, I, I asked around a couple of my friends, or rather more like commiserated, you know, kind of cried on their shoulder a little bit, like, oh, this is awful. What a terrible day. And I, I, just, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm drowning in this stuff. And I said, well, dude, maybe you just need to cut some stuff out. Maybe you just need to get, you know, pull some stuff out. You're, you're spreading yourself too thin. You're taking on too many things. And I, and I don't want to sound like I'm being stubborn, but my reaction to that was, no, no, I'm not spreading myself too thin. This is an organizational problem. This is not a time uh, resource problem. This is a problem where I'm just not fitting in the stuff properly. Like when I looked at that day and said I was spending 20 minutes on this, 20 minutes on that, it's because I would work until I got bored with it. And I go, what else do I have to do? Oh, I'll do that for a little bit. I'll do that until I'm bored with it. Yeah, I'll do this now. And as a result of that, I'm never allowing myself or forcing myself to get into the full rhythm of doing it. I'm just doing it in a playful kind of way, in a distracted kind of way. Oh, you know sure. what I mean? I mean that, and, and depending on your tasks, like if you could, um, I suppose it, if, uh, if what you have to do is completable in that time frame, then perfect i guess right i mean you're just sort of right but what i was doing was like let's customize the css on the sugary cereals website and let's do that in 20 yeah. minutes and yeah and and let's get something that works and when you when you're being playful with it now i love learning in the spirit of play and i love working in the spirit of play but when you're doing it purely that way and only that way for an extended period of time you don't have a clear, or at least I didn't, have a clear sense of what I was trying to accomplish. I'm going to try putting the navigation buttons here, see what that looks like. Eh, I can't get that to work right. Well, I'll put them back down here. I wonder what would happen if I put them over here. Okay, well, that's a fun way to work, but you can easily fritter away a bunch of time that you need for other things because you're not looking at what you're really trying to accomplish. i got to get these buttons working. Let's get these buttons working right yeah. now. And let's play with it a little bit, but chop, chop, you got another thing to do. Just get them working. Don't goof around with them, right? That sounds really severe. I don't mean it to, but... No, you have those trade-offs all the time. Um, and especially when you're working on something that has uh, um, so many layers to it, like the you know dealing with a, a web presence. I mean, you have this interactive creative product where I'm, I mean, comics are very complex too. I mean, so you know, we we have uh, let's see, well, when we talked about um, what was a Letterman, the episode of uh, uh, um, the Lean Into Our Cast, where we talked about um, how oh, I mean, I've been letters, saving yeah. time on by by just not putting in enough effort on a certain step. Um, you have, you, I don't. You just have all these trade offs um, that uh, that. Some tasks that have all those complexities, you 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 maybe you can um, maybe you have the, the the time and interest to, to deal with the um, time, interest, and familiarity with the task. Some aspects of the task, but not others. And so those will probably get 
more attention than the others or you'll overly worry about the other part that you aren't as familiar with and then put tons of effort into that and not enough time for trade-offs yep yep it yes maybe that you, you as usual you find a clearer way to coin things than i do it confronts you with the trade-off putting that limitation on it confronts you with making that trade-off whether whichever side you choose if i if i'm facing that trade-off like okay is this about getting functioning buttons or is this about getting something that's pretty and funny and and unique on the site something idiosyncratic dude this is about getting something that's idiosyncratic on the site by all means jurors continue to play at least you know where you're going now uh but if is this about just getting the buttons working yeah that's kind of what i'm up against right now i really need to get the buttons working so i can move on to the next thing get the buttons working quit goofing around and move on either way it put it pushes you into making that decision so you can make clearer choices as you investigate each direction, yep. right? It's not about saying like, oh, efficiency is key. This isn't about, you know, really pushing that home as much. Although it, it, it makes you more efficient in the end. Uh, at least I'm Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're thinking about where you're putting your time and, uh, and what you're working on, because, you know, for some people, the list would be a lot of different projects. For some people, it would be, um, you know, family time and projects. For some people, it would be, I mean, who knows? Um, key hobby or mm -hmm. interests um, you know training for some 10k race or um, you know perhaps you live near Boston where isn't it is it Boston where there's the zombie run anyway I know I'd be training for that oh <laughs> that would have to fit on my list <laughs> I don't know if I would want to be a zombie <laughs> or a runner it'd be a tough tough call but uh, anyway those things they got to fit on the list and it pushes other things off the list and and uh well and that's yeah that's that's one of the big things that i took away from this that i had a, a really uh kind of a real positive experience with is it helped me to figure out where things could go during my day and instead of coming at it going okay what am i going to do first i've got nine things that need to be done today what am i going to do first you know now i know because and especially with like i really ran into this hard in this last week and i'm sure people who have families deal with this all the time um it was between the holidays a lot of a lot of old friends are in town who I'm only going to get to see that mm -hmm. week, Got, and and it's a good problem to have, right? People care about me and want to see me. Uh, I'm not going to complain about that. But there were three days last week where, in the middle of my work day, you know, I got a two hour visit, I got a three hour visit from a friend, and uh, as as awesome as that was, normally that would throw my whole day out of whack. It's like, oh, I've got an hour till so and so gets here. Um, I can't get into doing this thing now because I'm going to get into that zone. The door's going to knock, and I'm going to lose it. Uh, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to read a magazine sitting on the chair next to the door waiting for them to get here, or I'm going to play a video game for a little while. Nice way to spend time, but not ticking off my to-do list. Um, what By going through this, this is where I want to back up a second, talk about where I come back to this area at the end of my day, the three major tasks for today. So after going through this, let's say I set aside three hours to work on my thumbnails. And thumbnails took about four and a half hours. And that's something I'm finding is that what feels... Sometimes, let me put it this way. How many times does this happen to you, Rob? You're like, I'm going to take a five-minute break and look at Twitter. And then you get back to work, you're like, whoa, that was 15 right. minutes? You know, it's like, you know, our perception of time is different than what real time is sometimes. Uh, for better or worse. So I'll, I'll look at the clock and go, I can do my thumbnails in three hours. Not so, Thundercracker, because it's going to take four and a quarter hours for you to do it. Well, that gets marked. I'll grab that in the time stream, and I'll mark why that happened, and then I'll put back up here 4.25 hours. And this helps me assess for future planning, right? It's like now I know that, okay, I'm going to do another round of thumbs. That's going to take X amount of time. But then and also, like because of things like this Jared comic, okay, I've given myself an hour to do it. I know I can do it in an hour because I've tested it out last couple of times. I've, by the way, the Jared comic's updating again, everybody, at mejerry.com oh, yeah. if you're interested. Um, uh, anyway, and <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But um, So, okay, well, now I've got an hour before my friend gets here. Like, oh, they said they're going to be here at 5.30, right? So I got five. I go to 5.30 on this thing, visit. I've got all of my tasks filled up till 4.30. Oh, is that 4.30? No, this is 4.30. There we go. So tasks end here. I've got this open hour. Well, now I know where I can put this. Zoop, I'll move it there. I had it up here. 
I'm going to move it down there, quickly do that while I wait for my friend to get there, and I'm getting more done. I'm, I'm rearranging things into places where I can deal with the, the, the cognitive load that's necessary for that task, right? Thumbnailing a 22-page story has a different cognitive load than doing a four-panel Jared comic strip, oh, yeah. right? So hmm. that, was, that was the other big takeaway that I, I really had a, a, a wonderful experience with in using this is that it helped me to fill the day more tightly, and the way the the analogy I came up with before we started recording was is it's like you're moving the furniture in your living room. You got a big couch, and uh, it's kind of difficult to figure out where to put that couch. And then somebody's going to say, "Well, you just need a smaller couch. That's all." No, to heck with you. I'm going to find a, uh, a a way to coordinate my coffee table, couch, lamp, TV, whatever, so that it fits in this space. And maybe I'll be a little tight. Maybe it'll be snug, but it's going to work. And that's what this this thing has allowed me to do is uh, pack everything in so as to be everything squeezed together really tightly. And yes, if something happens, if calamity happens, I get a phone call that I didn't expect and I got to deal with a thing. Okay. Something's not getting done this morning. This is one of the reasons we're talking about this today. I had scheduled for noon, a warm up sketch for my day and I didn't get it done because I didn't get home until afternoon. And by the time I was uh, geared up and ready to do it, it was time to meet with you. So, that one's not happening today. No big deal. I'll just try it again tomorrow. So it packs things really tightly like a Jenga tower, and eventually, you know, that means some blocks are going to get knocked out here and there. But, you know, at least you have a record that you, A, that you tried, and B, that you got something that you did. It's so valuable. Um, <clears throat> this kind of exercise is, is huge for... Um, it reminds me a little bit of... Uh, I know it's not in the act of how you do this. It's not the same as... Well, agile um, development projects, software development, but there's some similarity in mm -hmm. that you're taking care to uh, express what you're about to do and then track what actually happened. And then ideally, then integrate those two back together as you and, and that should inform your future. Um, estimation and yep. because this kind of um, estimation's hard it's really hard there's so much uh, variance and that's why what's I don't know um, let's see I go back and forth between I, I've, I've had like a, um, a spreadsheet approach for estimating things um, I've played around with you know Microsoft project for some projects that I'd coordinate and whatnot um, uh, and I also built this tool called, um, um, well, it ended up not being released to market or whatever, but I called it as my project name, Personal Evolution, later to find out that frickin' everybody called their thing Personal Evolution and when it came to doing some kind of iterative process with how do you continue to improve your time management and different concerns and aspects of your life. Um, Anyway, so I've done a lot of thinking and playing around with it with these different areas, and like I think the hardest thing for me that and and I've noticed for others too, um, because of my you know the the software development parts of my career is where I've seen a lot of this is always asking someone, oh okay, we're going to build this part of the system. How long do you think that'll take? Everyone sucks at it. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody. Yep. Uh, project managers end up real end up finding they have their own algorithm for interpreting how people suck differently at <laughs> estimating. And then they will do, you know, what you say times whatever or divided by whatever plus this and, you know, mm -hmm. the weather and the holiday or whatever anyway. And then they'll have their actual, their roadmap that um, still probably is wrong. Hopefully. Less. Yeah, so what you're talking about is something that you know, you'd think after 15 years of doing freelance illustration, comic book illustration, working, for, working from home since 2004, that I'd get really good at predicting how long things would take. Uh, but there's a lot of factors in there uh, that, like, it's like something I once said, like, don't, pl don't plan your year uh, or, or take, don't start planning new projects when you're coming high off of finishing a really good project because that's like going grocery shopping when you're really hungry. 
you know, because like you, you finish a project that you're really proud of. You're like, yeah, I could do anything. Yeah. A 200 page book by Tuesday. You bet I could do it. I could do anything. You know, it's like plan when you're feeling really low about your productivity, because then you're going to be a lot more, you know, uh, well, maybe not when you're really low, but what I mean is like when you, Whatever, when you have, yeah, when you've recovered. Yeah. Cause, cause when you, it's depending on your temperament, if you're feeling really low about your productivity, then you do that whole terrible thing where you say, uh, I'm going to do a million things next year to make up for all of the failures this year. You know, you don't want to do that. Either. Right. Which, I mean, that's a negative feedback loop too, where, um, like, uh, what recently in what back to work, uh, uh, podcast on the, uh, five by five network, uh, Oh, what it what was it called? Uh, something like the, the smell of hotel steak failure or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, utter failure, utter. Oh man, I just loaded it. <laughs> utter failure in hotel steak episode forty-seven, yep. which we'll link to in the show cool. notes. And um, it uh, um, so yeah, I mean Merlin was really driving home the idea that um, unrealistic goals feed a it's a negative feedback loop because you're telling yourself you won't accomplish things. And uh, mm-hmm. I've seen it work that way, um, but it, it totally doesn't have to work that way. Um, let's see. I feel like doing You did. Okay. You got something? No, no. If you're, if you take the wheel. Okay. Well, let's see. So yeah, the back to work point is, um, so you, you, you know, you come up with your, you know, your your your, your plans uh, and wishes. Uh, oomt. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and it's you know, it's it's this big, but like your resources are like this, you know. And no matter what, like so, if you take if you take like the literally, you you perfectly execute, and you get rid of you know this much of your plans and wishes. You, that's this is done, yay, right? Um, so you have you have this much win, and this much lose. Yeah. Which you know is a vastly greater percent <laughs> than what, and you know somehow that may seem bad, but to me, I think that I'm. Um, and that maybe I've got a warped perspective on this. I'm happy to accept that. Um, but in playing with the idea of, well, how long does it take me to accomplish things? What do I want to do? What do I want to accomplish in different areas of my life and whatever? Um, I've noticed that sometimes, like, I may have this much resource and I might do this. I've noticed that sometimes where um, I would have a, I would take out, something major or like or or a long list of things because it was efficient because I misinterpreted what it would take to accomplish it and so there's different things you could misinterpret so allowing for a little more flexibility and forgiveness um has been I think pretty helpful so I you know I'm not yeah. really a a fan of the you know let's toss out goal planning you know I mean if you if you enjoy, uh, well uh at the new year because you know it always leads to bad. Doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. Um, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. It, it, yeah. The case Merlin was making is that uh, it, it runs the risk of. Well, he points out like what what features you do need, you okay. know. And he said like in, in order to execute on a goal, and he said if you if you have those features, if you have those skill sets, if you have those uh, predilections, then you don't even need to set goals because you'll execute every time. Uh, I think I think having a goal and and expressing it, um, you know, outwardly. Uh, what am I trying to say? Explicitly uh, is is a great way. To, it's like it's like it's, by saying it out loud, it's forcing you to consider the thing again and look at it again. And is it still the thing you want? You know, because you're changing throughout the year, um, giving you an opportunity to. Uh, See if you're on track to where you wanted to go, or it, even if that's where you wanted to go in the first place. Right. Um, anyway, um, this is so. What's funny is I actually I play around with both areas now. Um, I, I look at it in the spirit of play, where I will ebb and flow back and forth between these these modes of operating, and it'll depend on the projects I have going on. Um, sometimes I'll have too much going on where there's no way that I could possibly play around with the um, 
the flexibility or I may have so much going on where all I can do is believe that I will get up and do what's best with my time on a given day and go from thing to thing for a certain time period, right? So sometimes, you know, uh, you know having a, con you know, uh, a contract to work on, things that lean into art, um, a story arc at Art Geek Zoo, an update of Guitar Fredder or whatever. I mean, I may have, you know, enough on my plate where I'm like, well, um, I trust they'll be working on the important things and uh, mm -hmm. I won't worry about this stuff because this does, this does take, this takes a little extra administrative time and you will get no benefit from it if, if you don't put in the administrative time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. because yeah, it does. And, and I mean, it, this is where it's not a one size fits all kind of situation because if it's something where it's like, well, I just want to make sure I have time every week to do one page on my web comic. Um, just, just creating a sense of habit will take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was updating web comics regularly, I just had a, like two nights a week where that's what I worked on. And that's how I made sure I, I executed on that goal. I didn't have to have a task planner to fit it in. Uh, and as a matter of fact, one of the things I said, I, I documented some of this very quickly in a Thunder Punch Daily, a new Thunder Punch Daily that's on. Uh, it, it's actually in the podcast feed for Lean Into Art if you subscribe to all the podcasts. Um, well worth it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I believe I said in that uh, Thunder Punch that I'm really looking at this emergent task planner as a way to get me into some habits and not to be like this savior that I'm ultimately dependent on, but more like a set of training wheels to get me into a couple of really good habits about productivity. Because another thing that it did, and this is where I get nervous because I don't want to be dependent on anything, um, but I am at this point because I just started with it, so focused on it. Um, it's serving as a physical artifact to remind me that you said you were going to do this at this time. You know, hmm. so when I put 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., you're thumbnailing. Now, I've said before, thumbnailing for me is the most difficult and interesting part of making comics because that's where you're making a lot of the – that's where you're doing all the writing. That's where you're deciding what panels are big, what panels are small, what angles you're looking at the characters from. You know, uh, how are you framing your elements in the shots? What sound effects are you using? Well, how, what's the final dialogue going to be in the scene? I do make a lot of those choices at that stage. As a matter of fact, Ryan Estrada was one of the people who visited me last week and uh he i showed him the thumbnails to the new book i just finished writing and he, he looks it over and he's like do you do this with every book you do and i was like yeah why and he's like this is a lot of work you know it's like most people or a lot of people will do this at the art stage and i'm like no i pr completely pre-visualize a story before i draw it as we've gone into why in the past doesn't matter um but anyway what i'm what i'm driving at here is Sitting down with that blank sheet of paper to thumbnail is one of the most daunting parts of my career. You know, it's like any, take any given point of what I do for a living in either drawing comics or teaching comics. One of the parts that to this day always frightens me is sitting down in front of that blank paper and writing because a lot of it's not going to be very good. And there's going to be a lot of having to pick through. And, and, and anyway, the, writing is hard. So. It's easy to procrastinate on that. It's easy for me to go, well, you know, I'm just going to go have one more cup of coffee and read the news a little bit more before I dive into doing these thumbnails. But no, I had it written down, dude, you said 10 o'clock you're going to do this thing. And that was just enough to make me go, yeah, I said I would. All right, all right, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're going to sit down and we're going to write this thing. And you know what? I, get, I got some stuff done as a result of that. I got the most difficult and most interesting part of a comic out of my system because I for just like with the Boulder and Fleet thing I did last year where I said, you're doing a comic in a week. You set that arbitrary deadline, and now I forced myself to do it, and, and I found myself less likely to find excuses to not do it and find clever ways to procrastinate. Well, I better go check the mail. Uh, you know, Oh, uh, did, I, did I leave the, the, the oven on? I don't know. I better go look at that real quick instead of sitting down at my desk. So Isn't that funny? It, you know, it's a commitment trick. You wrote the word commitment on the screen. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I get nervous about that word because I don't want to have to be like, well, I can't do it unless I have this piece of paper telling me to do it. 
But what I am hoping is that it will coax me back into a habit of being able to just sit down again. Uh, we talked before about how, you know, uh, a taste of success, if you, if you find, if you get a taste of success, you'll find that it suits you and that starts a positive reinforcement cycle to make you say, I can sit down and write today. Um, yep. These kinds of commitment tricks can get you to get into that cycle again. Because I'll tell you what, three days ago, I finished some thumbnails on a book, and I felt like I was on cloud nine. I wanted to share the thumbnails with the whole world. Like, oh, this is a great story. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I cannot wait to start penciling this thing. Two days later, I start thumbnailing the front, and I get 10 pages in, and it's awful. It's, oh, it's it's <laughs> putrid. I mean, it's it's where even I might say something mean to a student if I looked at those thumbnails. They were so bad. So self-indulgent and so without any kind of structure or theme or it's just it was like just barfing my brain on a piece of paper. And, and at the time, I thought, well, I'm really going somewhere with this. And then to back up and go, no, this is really, really garbage. That was hard to take, you know, and, and you know what? The next day it was hard to sit down and thumbnail again. So, you know, it's having that piece of paper was that one extra little step to say, hey, you said you're going to do it. Do it. Just shut up and do it. Quit being a baby. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's what. Uh, yeah, I, I, we're we're like trying to um, hack our own behavior, right? And and um, yep. get get our, our our head around what we can do because we commit things to other people, which which is another aspect of making these kind the you know like this very structured approach. Um, you know, estimation and um, and uh, and uh, I don't know, reflection on estimates. Um, it's because you're trying to do. If you're trying to do this for um, someone else, and you're getting paid for a project, um, in order for this to be a sustainable business for you, you're going to need to have your feel for how long thing, things things take you. Even though it's it's inaccurate, it's better than nothing. Um, and you'll get more accurate at it. Um, like I noticed when when variables um, on certain projects um, were were sort of reduced. Where okay, I have a lot of experience doing this kind of you know business app with this team in whatever in these tools, etc. All of a sudden, it's like, well, we did this like three four times. We've got these estimates, and um, now my you know my my new estimates were getting you know rather accurate, but you know, even when the, there's a lot of variables like, uh, uh, you know, picking a new tool, um, trying a new technique on your comic, or um, a new style of story that, that you haven't done before. Maybe you're used to doing comedy and you want to add mystery. And, uh, well, I mean, you're having some estimate. You'll help, it will help you with, with uh, how long that will take you to create, but it's, you know, probably not going to be as accurate as when you're doing the same thing doesn't mean it's it's useless either um, but um, yeah so those things that are um, I don't know even if I would argue they're they're handy to visit sometimes even if you're not building this for someone else or d not directly because eventually you, you um, I mean you probably want to know how long stuff takes you to create because you've got friends to visit and whatever. Um, sooner or later, there's as, some outside factor to coordinate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if there's not, I mean, it's just it, as in a sense of, um, you know, runners marking their time, you know. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm one of those teachers who enjoys teaching in classrooms where I don't have to do a whole lot of, of uh, measurement that you can put on a bar graph, right? I can give you qualitative measurement, but not quantitative measurement of right. what's happening in my classrooms. Um, and you know, I, I <laughs> that's the way I like it. But on the other hand, uh, you know, you you would benefit from some kind of metrics on your abilities and the way you've been. Uh, progressing through your work, right? Because, again, going back to this idea of, like, time being a subjective thing, uh, I joke around a lot that one of my favorite things in the world is getting lost in a page, like I'm doing some background three-point perspective work, and 
I'll, I'll be working for four hours on this elaborate background, and then I'll look up, and I'll, it'll feel like it was only minutes. And, you know, I'm, I'm dehydrated, and I have to go to the bathroom. And I didn't even realize it because I was so involved in this page. That, that's, like, part of the, of the joy of making comics. But there was four hours that went by, you know, in a flash. What if I could make that into two hours that goes by in a flash, and I'm getting even more done? Uh, and that's where you mentioned the, um, um, are you, you know, um, someone sharing with you, well, hey, maybe you could take a few things off of that list. Um, yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, but there, there's a little bit of squishiness here where is it, uh, like, well, what is it? I mean, so maybe living under that situation a little bit longer, getting more perspective, um, planning and measuring, maybe you'll come up with a new understanding where if you avoided trying that list of things, um, you wouldn't get that new understanding. Um, there we go. Yeah, I mean, it's not really black and white. I mean, is it bad? Like, is it if it's stressing you out and whatever? I mean, whatever works for you to manage that, right? If um, mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out, because I'm someone who also, like, I will put way more things on my list than I know. Um, where if I were someone that I judged, you know, my happiness based on getting every single thing done off my list... Uh, yeah, I'd be pretty bummed out a lot. And I have been frustrated at times with that, but I've my relationship with creating these lists and with estimating and stuff has changed over the years where um, it's useful, but it's a little bit, you know, sort of I have some aesthetic distance there where I'm like, yeah, this is a tool, whatever. Um, is it helping me out, isn't it? And that's why I like to, I'll switch modes, like I mentioned earlier, where, yeah, sometimes I'll... Let's see. Yeah, sometimes I will um, <laughs> go between having a lot of goals and a lot of measures and then no goals. And, or, or, you know, like, or they actually, I never go to no goals. I'm always somewhere with, um, you know, I'm marching towards something, but I really need to just keep adapting in the moment. I don't know. Uh, too, many, too many variables are in flux. And I'll, yes, I'll revert when yes. I can get some more experience with these new variables. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, yeah, and that, that's where I was trying to go when I was saying, like, well, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me to think that, oh, I have the answer. This is the new law, and we will all obey it. No, it's <laughs> like I'm excited because, hey, I found this thing that's really helping me out right now, and then here's what I got out of it, everybody. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I forgot where I was going to go with it. With, uh, some of the things that you were saying about this. Uh, now I'm drawing up a blank. No. But you were talking about how this is something that you know you can oscillate from, and it's not something you even need to attend to if it if it causes you too much stress to even um, some people to apply this much administration to your workday, right? Because yeah, it could be the the additional effort of this task and trying to reflect on it, and sometimes it's scary to to look at. Well, what am I doing? I don't know. I think I'm doing fine. I don't want to question it. Well, then, I, then you're probably top of my list that you probably should be questioning it if you were on my team. But, um, you know, if you're not on my team, I won't be bothering you, you with that. Um, but the more the aspect of uh, people who do put a lot of things on their list and then really get stressed about it. Um, Two things about this. Um, one, astute listeners are going to remember that the last time we talked about time management, I intimated that I thought David Say was a little bit on the nutty side, that he was that tightly monitoring his productivity and reassessing how much he was accomplishing in a day. When Ann was uh, you know, telling me about this uh, emergent task planner, I looked at it and I went, <laughs> whatever, I am not going to be that fastidious about marking my day. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, it's like, it's it's the kind of thing where, I want, I want everybody to understand who's listening and maybe going like, God, this seems like a lot of work for what? Um, I'm coming from the standpoint of a guy who hit a crisis. I looked at my day and said, I, I'm, I'm drowning here. I don't know how to make sense out of all this. Somebody get throw me a, a, a lifeboat here or a, a, a lifesaver. And I, I got one and it worked. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this really bailed me out. I'm really excited about it right now. Okay, so that's, that's point one. Point two is another thing that I think that – I know I fall victim to, and again, I talked about this in the Thunder Punch Daily, is um, that machismo that comes out of being really busy all the time. 
You know, you feel more American when you're overworked. You feel like you got bragging rights. Well, I worked 16 hours today. I ne I'm never off the clock. I am always, always working. I am such a good guy because I'm always, always working. And then I had, I had, I had a wake-up call when I was talking to a cartoonist friend who uh, I was trying to get them scheduled to do a Skype visit at the Ann Arbor District Library for the Ann Arbor Comics Artist Forum, which you're going to be at, actually, very soon now. Actually, oh, my yeah, God, that's coming January up. January 8th. January 8th. Yeah. That's uh, this coming weekend. Um, well, this this person I was talking to, they said, oh, that's on a Sunday, isn't it? And I said, yeah. And they said, oh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't work on Sundays. That's my recharge day. And I was like, recharge day? What are you talking about? What, who needs a recharge day? We just barrel through. We're cartoonists. Uh, and then I thought about it, and I was like, you know, I wonder what it'd be like to have a recharge day. I bet I'd benefit from that. It'd be really unique to take a day off for myself and just goof around and do nothing. Boy, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, I wonder how I get there, right? Yep. It. Uh... So ironically, these lists can, can I mean, you can, <clears throat> you can work your way toward that, too. And, uh, God, that's almost like a perfect segue. So just to describe, you cool if I describe a little bit about... Um, this personal evolution thing, like, please do. Uh, I've spent enough time selling products for David Say. <laughs> uh, yeah, this isn't as um, that 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 David Say method is pretty darn cool. In the um, boy, it is a bit of extra administrative work, but th but that that um, that really yeah. tactical planning and estimation. Um, that's cool. I mean, it's going to make that like um, what you're accomplishing and what's getting you know shifted around or whatever. Like, you're going to get a really good bunch of data, even if you do it for like a week, right? <clears throat> That's just going to be super handy. Um, where this is more um, going from the macro, like so. This thing was um, was based on the idea that you know, so here here's me or or someone. So I guess you know. that um, you have a lot of different, you know, concerns or wishes or things in life you want to accomplish. And I'm like, you know, how do I, um, <sighs> like, how do these, th these things work individually and together, right? So these things are sort of, um, it's like separating concerns of, of like, well, I want to be social, right, with my friends. I want to have a uh, a career um, or business or however you look at that, right? So, or you know, your your trade. Um, I want to be fit and healthy, right? I let's see. I want to be educated, right? What am I doing in that area? I would like. Um, let's see. Uh, to have well-managed finances. Oh, okay, I've got my finances, right? And then, what else do I got here? Social, career, fit, trade, healthy. Um, and then you can get into sort of um, more psychology kinds of things and or spiritual kinds of things, right? So emotional uh, needs and um, you could go Ah, eh, what the heck? I'll go with spiritual. Why not? Are you working off of Maslow's hierarchy of uh, things that we humans need? Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of of needs, which um, that that is essentially a pyramid, isn't it? Four stages where um, something like that, like the bottom is like all of the things like eating, reproduction, the pure survival yeah, stuff, physical survival. physical survival, and then and like at the top is self actualization. Yep. That's a big word. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Yeah, you're right. That's what it is. Um, very related to Maslow's pyramid. Um, and uh, we'll just scribble that, and we'll, we'll assume that's the word I, I meant to write there, uh, self-actualization. <laughs> and um, slit, what's funny is, like, Maslow's pyramid is referred to all the time in uh, the, the realms of user experience. Um, I think it's M-A-Z-L-O-W. And, I think so. Um, I think what was he a? 
sort of like a, an industrial psychologist or something, or I don't know. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, I should I should know more of this too because I, I mean I've come across um, uh, him being quoted quite a bit because in the in the field of user experience, I mean you're trying to um, you're trying to help people enjoy things in these areas, but a lot of lot of solutions and and companies and things that get built, I mean they're really at barely at the level of survival as far as um, you know, addressing the the sort of human needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a whatever a pyramid of human needs or whatever. And as the closer you get to the bottom of the pyramid, the more you have needs that are responding out of the lizard brain. Like towards the middle is like prestige, um, but then as you get close to the top, it's more about you know uh, just improving yourself for the sake of improving yourself and finding the well. You know, everybody knows what self actualization means. I think. Yeah. I don't need to elaborate on that. But anyway, so yeah, like emotional needs, it's like finances would be more towards the bottom of the pyramid, pyramid education would be more towards the top of the pyramid, career or trade would be somewhere in the middle. And fit and health, that's prestige. Yep. Yeah. And um, there could be more here. But the point of this process is I came up with these and their emphasis based on my, you know, my own like ecosystem instead of a pyramid. Uh, so, it it's related, but it's like coming up with your own non-prescriptive way of, you know, figuring out well what's meaningful to you in the in in the areas that you find um, are useful separations of concerns that um, lead to a the kind of life that you want or whatever um and if this was it, it, instead of being written up as a book like uh oh gosh i'm forgetting the i should not be forgetting uh the getting thing getting things done author's name david, david allen david allen there you go um it, you know instead of a uh really a complete method or whatnot this was like having sort of a a series of notes from a booklet of friends that were talking about, well, how do you plan your life and what do you want to do next and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it, out of those conversations, kind of concocting, you know, my own thing or whatever. So I went from that to like saying, oh, okay, well, boy, this is a lot to keep track of. So I built an application. And uh, then, uh, and that, that sort of helped me track and report like what I thought from, from year to year in these areas. And um, well, it, it's it's a lot of work, and it doesn't quite help in the day to day. So, um, so in the end, I realized well, some you know, I, I was I was building it up to maybe release it into an app or whatever. But I realized that in general, it would need a lot of a, a lot of work that I didn't want to put into it. And it's really you know, I can come up with what's working for me, but it's not like I wanted to make it into something prescriptive for everyone else. So I went eh, and I set it aside. Um, but it does affect how I plan. Um, so this isn't going to be in uh, a mobile app? Not for now. Okay. If anybody uh, expresses an, uh, a desire for this, can they contact you to say, hey, put some work into this, I'll buy it? Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, if, if somehow this triggers um, interest and stuff, I think there's a way to do this that isn't pre very prescriptive that helps people mm -hmm. arrive at their own things but and where I what I've landed on is uh, um, like I was working on an app that that is really mm -hmm. about this this just the the act of self surveying and checking in right mm -hmm. and sort of doing a um, it's it's like a journaling with a um, an eye toward having some kind of uh, measurability to it and um, you can theme it in different ways and different questions and stuff. But I don't know that that is actually um, set aside too because well, <laughs> there's other there. I have a lot of other uh, a lot of other things I'm working on. So anyway, true. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Um, would... I'll be interested to see if if you ever find the time to finish it or the inspiration strikes where you have to finish it. I'd be interested in seeing what the difference is because like a lot of those kinds of apps are typically a thing to just pester you. Hey, you said you were gonna do a thing at this time. Do a thing at this time, you know, uh, which can be good uh, to get you into a habit, or it can be another thing to remind you of. Oh yeah, I was gonna do that thing. Boy, I don't want to do that thing. Exactly. Um, 
yeah, you put all your effort into this app, and that's oh right. Then so one of the things I, le I learned from that too is like, that's thanks for thanks Jersey for that because uh, so I don't know what I did. <laughs> the app or uh, system you write up um, it, does it serve you right? Um, so you you know you you do some planning and uh, and sort of task management and stuff. Um, and then does it? What does it do? So it, so it, it stores it. So you you know like at least you know where it's at, right? It's not sitting all all sorts of different places. You can quickly you know filter and find uh, and add. But you know a lot of what it does, other than if you just sat and thought about this or whatever, it it, it adds this. Well, it can bug you, right? Yeah. Um. And you know, depending on your style and preferences, maybe that's great, perfect. You want that feature, it's desirable. But I think there's different time frames, and this is this is sort of the um, the the crux of my planning, not planning process, whatever. It uh, uh, I like to revisit things at different granularities and then see what I see, right? So um, I could go, you know, day to day. You know, um, and, and you know, obviously, different other uh, time frames, weeks, months, and uh, and years, and look at stuff, uh, and then sort of, you know, five to ten years, and then like each of these different perspectives. I mean, you're just going to see that list of tasks in way different ways. Um, yeah, and that's extra info. You know, if you see it. You look at this from the five to ten, ten year perspective, and you go, "Why do I even care about X, Y, or Z?" Well, cool. Why, why not use that now? And uh, yep. start filtering. Um, yeah. So. Well, I think we talked. I think we we covered a lot of ground in terms of philosophy of time management and philosophy of collecting information about yourself. Uh, you know, we've talked before about self-assessment, but I think we actually gave um, a little bit more concretized versions of what assessing yourself means. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's fair to say. I mean, oh, I think there's you know plenty, plenty more to explore or whatnot. But uh, it, oh, of course maybe, there is. There'll be a part three. Yeah, totally. Um, the uh, you've got your day-to-day -day time management, and, and they serve different needs. Like I actually. If there's one extra thing I, I want to um, to share is that planning with those big buckets is going to serve a different helpful purpose than planning with the the the, the narrow tactical buckets, right? And um, I mean, uh, I'm I don't know, I'm really impressed with the uh, with that that toolkit this time because I remember looking at. Um, um, do 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 do. Trying to look up what that thing was called. Um, the emergent task emergent planner. task planner. And um, well, for that task, I think it's pretty slick. And that's just a way different concern than than, than doing like the the big picture bucket things, right? You know, absolutely. You want to retire? On a absolutely. Or in a you know mobile home somewhere, whatever. Right. No. Yeah. It's it's definitely not a big picture task thing. The way the the language Anne used, and I think and I'm going to give her credit for it. And every time I do, she's like, "I'm not the first one to say it." Uh, is it's it's a way to demonstrate. If if you get nothing else from it, you have a record of chipping away at the thing, at the big thing. Because one of the things, what was the big crisis for me? What was that about? It was about putting in time and not feeling like I had anything to show for it. Now I did. But I didn't have anything assembled to show what I showed for it. I if if I had a boss, if my boss is me and I walk in and go, Drozd, what did you do today? I could go, ah, 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 you know, I, I I clocked in the hours, but there's nothing really here for you to understand, Chief. Uh, now I got something for that guy to see, which starts at the very least starts a positive cycle to go, okay, Drozd, you thumbnailed for four and a half hours the other day, and you've only got three pages to show for it. Does this mean you suck? No, it means that you put in the time and you wrote. And 
there's a record to show right there. And you know exactly when you fell apart because this is where you wrote in big, bold letters, <laughs> had to throw it away, <laughs> you know? So anyway, I mean, it, that I think that's probably the most positive uh, thing I got out of the whole thing was um, that psychological trick. Yeah, it, whatever system, you know, measuring stuff is helpful. And, um, you know, the big picture or the tactical picture, two different things. And uh, it should, however you're doing that, you you know, find one that serves you and experiment with it. Yeah. Whatever. It's, it's not, uh, it's, it's not a fatalistic situation. There's lots of things to, to try or invent, right? Uh, find your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I've messed around with a whole bunch of different ones of my own over the years based on different jobs I've worked. You know, I worked with a, a ticket system an in and out box, a whole bunch of different ways of doing these things. But um, this is just the latest one that I'm finding I'm getting some positive uh, takeaways from. And I'll also say this for, for David say he gives it away for free. It's a free PDF that you can download. You can purchase a fancy one from Amazon. And he has a link to it, but he's like, but look, if you just want, you know, the quickie one, you print it out yourself and just use a, you know, binder clip on the top. Um, that works. Yeah, and I'm going to say, I mean, if you find it's giving you great value and whatnot, please support him, right? Yeah. Um, because, yeah, good on him for sharing it in that way. Yep. Um, that's awesome. So, okay, uh, what else we got? What else is, uh, we got to got to wrap it up yeah. uh we got a thing coming up this week we got a couple things coming up this weekend ah. we've got uh, yes i'm excited using the force on me <laughs> things are coming up uh i've got a class i've got a workshop yes and uh that lean into art.com and it is called fatam uh designing sound effects a hands-on approach to, to designing sound elements in adobe illustrator this is what my promise is to you for whoever takes this course. Uh, this will get as deep and nerdy as possible into the realm of sound design. We're going to talk about uh, all of the different realms of concern, whether it's spelling your custom sound. Uh, then after you spell it, you have to pick a font that uh, uh, evokes the quality of the sound that you're going for. Is it a hard sound? Is it a tinny sound? Is it a deep booming sound? Is it a high shrieking sound? Uh, different letter forms to communicate different things. Then what kind of lines you get to use? You get to convert this letter form into lines. What kind of lines you get to have a wiggly line, a smooth line? Is it going to get a make it a bold line, a thin line? And then you got to think about what color it is. What color is this sound? That's weird. And then how are you going to arrange the sound elements to create the rhythm of the sound? Like when a bomb goes off, not every part of the sound of the explosion is the same volume, right? So it's like kaboom, oh, sure. and it fades. Right. Yeah. So it's like the the oxygen oxygen would get sucked out of the atmosphere, and then something would happen. Right. So there's a. Yep. You could do that too. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to think about when you're designing good sound, and this goes for voices too. So we're gonna dig real deep into all that stuff, and I promise you that anybody who takes this class is gonna walk out with a newfound respect for sound design. You'll probably be using sound more in your comics, and uh, it's one of my favorite subjects. And I'm gonna if you haven't seen me excited until you've seen me talk about sound design. So uh, that's that's it. Uh, click the workshops link at leanintoart.com. Just a few days left at the time of this recording to sign up. Uh, and then it will only be available for a time shifted down. This is your chance to take advantage of the live class where you will be able to interact oh, yeah. with me and you can even talk with me while we're covering the subject. Right. And then there will be follow-up assignments that will be posted in the forum and you can post the, the assignments in the forum and I'll react to them. And Yeah. Different uh, levels of interaction, some. right? I mean, in in one, you've got him live. This is the this is the 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 best bang for your buck, right? As far as the the, the teaching and the experience. Um, if you're not into that, that's cool because it's available, um, downloadable too, and you do get to interact in the forums. But they're two different depths, right? Um, whereas mm -hmm. you get to inquire directly in class regarding, you know, your Slice of life comics, you know, need to share sounds because of an, an echoey hallway that the characters live in and how the footsteps sound there because it's a little bit damp versus, you know, somewhere else where all of a sudden you get, you know, it, and you get to ask him that live. Yeah. We can brainstorm the stuff on the spot because the cool thing about sound design is it's wide open. There are no hard and fast rules. I have theories. I have theories that I've practiced, but, uh, 
I, by no means do I have uh, what I th would call a, a book written on the subject. Uh, that's why I, I get excited about it, yep. because new symbols are being invented all the time. So, what? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, so there's that. That's happening. That starts uh, Saturday the 7th. It's a three-session course. If you take the live course, uh, you get the, the two live classes plus a live lab. And it's right here on yeah. the class page. And uh, cool. So you're pulling up the class page right here. I think it's still working on yeah. being, getting pulled up because I'm not quite. Uh, oh, for, oh, for we goodness sake! Like, uh, this on video, and uh, what we do on the Lean Into Art Cast. You see it now. I see it. Um, is okay. you know much like our our uh, classroom experience, where um, you know you get, you see the teacher live and they're working, they're sharing their desktop, sharing documents and presentations and. And, uh, you know, there's, depending on, on the class, I mean, you may be uh, um, joining the other students and doing a live exercise on screen. Tons of different fun interactions mm -hmm. to be had. Yep. So, worth mentioning. That's true. Yeah. So, it's, there's a lot of, there's a reason the live experience uh, is priced the way it is because there's a lot of value in the live experience. But if, if it's a situation where it's like, I can't be there during those times, uh, I really need the time shifted experience. There's other tiers for that per, the, that student as well. But in in all cases, you'll have free access when you sign up for any class. You get access to the forums where the work is posted based on the classes, and then also there's going to be other values that we're adding. Like for instance, uh, future lean into art casts, or we're going to do some ones that are open up to the the community in the forum yep. to participate in. More cool stuff to come for members. So as soon okay. as you sign up for one class, you're 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 a member. So. And we've got lots more fun things in the works coming to announce for, uh, you know, why it's awesome to be a member of Lean Into Art. Cool. And then uh, if anybody's going to be, <laughs> if anybody's watching in the uh, southeast Michigan area, uh, you're going to be at the Ann Arbor District Library Sunday the 8th. Yes. Yeah. Um, over Skype. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be um, talking about the, um, the oh, let's see, the the serialized um, serialized comics and how do you um, how do you keep the interest rolling and, and whatnot. So it'll be the uh, you know writing and drawing serial comics, the dramatic reveal, and it's not like I like my long titles and I like a lot of self evidence in those titles, but there's more to it than that. <laughs> I don't just go title done. <laughs> yep. Oh, but yes, that's at the Ann Arbor uh, Ann Arbor District Library downtown, fourth floor, the Comic Artists Forum. It's at aedl.org for more information, uh, and then just watch our Twitter feeds for more information about it. I'll be posting pictures and stuff when it's happening. That's gonna be a fun. One. I appreciate them. Uh, yeah, bringing me in. Happy to have you there. Thanks for making the time to be there. So, um, okay, anything else you want to make some noise about? New episodes of the Polytechnic Cast. Over at interactive dash storytelling. Queued up that I need to to edit and publish. I've got a lot cooking inside me here. You know, like they're talking about the the design topic. I don't know where that thing's got to get out. It's like I've got, you know, uh, I don't. I remember how I put that. I said something basically. You know what? It's like I've uh, I went and had my mad scientist experiments with the, um, you know, and I've, I spliced my genes with the radioactive, you know, fuel of design. And uh, now I'm hulking out on the topic. <laughs> and I don't know. We were talking about doing a series out of that, and I think we should. Yeah, that sounds good. And um, so maybe little glimpses of that. Um, actually, what's fun, I've got a, um, a new a coding uh, uh, Polytechnic cast coming up. That's going to be fun. I've got one where I talk a little bit about um, some customer service with uh, Guitar Fretter coming up. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard you talk about that in a while. So, yep. I don't know. Well, I don't cool. know. So, so, but it's all all that those podcasts are going to be you know, leanintoart dot com uh, slash podcasts. So, cool. All right. Well, then let's uh, let everybody get back to their lives and their time management. I gotta mark my list because uh, we went over, and so now I had a slated to end about an hour ago, and. Uh, oh. I'm marking it on my list, 410. Okay. So, uh, no.